All right, so it's been been over five months, been behind, but had to deal with work and some personal things. But we're back, and uh, I'm gonna finish this G1. So I just finished the G. Yeah, I finished G1 months ago, but keep forgetting to record. But we're here, and I'm gonna give you a recap and then my thoughts on the G1 overall, where would I rank it if I think it's better than last year or not. So uh, we're gonna go into day 16. This is where you had the B, the B block. So you, we have Tomatonga defeating S to Satoshi Kojima. Kojima. Then you had, uh, like, I won't be going into the standings because you already know the results. So at this point, like, we're at New Japan Cup, so you don't even, so I don't even need to bother. Thought they had a pretty solid match to open the show. Tomatonga had his usual spots. I like the jumping DDT he does. I like Kojima's machine gun chops and then his running forearm in the corner. That looked good. Good. One point, I think this is the one where Tomatonga ended up putting on a Kojima's uh, robe and shit to troll him. <laughs> I think yeah, I believe Tomatonga did it in this one, but uh, he ended up taking him out with the gun stun, aka the RKO, <laughs> New Japan. And it, after that, you get Juice Robinson defeating Toriano. Match was garbage. Thank God Yano didn't win. Good for Juice that he got some points, even though we already knew he wasn't even going to be close to winning. But Juice, he had a pretty good showing in the G1. Overall. Then you had uh, Elg Elgin defeat Michael Unbreakable Michael Elgin defeating Evil. That was a pretty good hard-hitting match. Elgin, Evil trying to show that he can brawl, hang with Elgin in terms of brawling. Elgin with his usual spinning spinning back fist, his roaring elbows. Those you have usual doing his usual spot where he uh take he takes a chair, grab, wraps it around Elgin, and he'll either just like throw you into the ring post. No, I'm pretty sure he grabbed another chair and smashed it. Like Evil had his spots, his disc is clothesline. Was clothesline, but at the end, Elgin was too much. Ended up hitting him with the buckle bomb, followed by the Elgin bomb for the three count. Yeah, Kenny Omega defeating Sonata. That was a pretty good match. Omega's a bitch. He's embarrassed. He's embarrassment to New Japan. But anyway, like he looked, he did his good. He's a good in ring worker though, and he looked good in the match. Sonata looked good. Omega hitting his usual V triggers. Triggers. His Topa Con Hilo was good. Sonata's uh, TKO was good. And I like how. And I really liked how, like, throughout the match, you would have uh, Sonata and uh, Omega. Fucking. They were going. I think they're. Yeah, they were going to these counters where Omega would try the one in angle. Angel. And uh, Sonata would escape, and he'd put him in the Dragon Sleeper. It was pretty good. It was really good shit to see from these guys. And you know what? They got pretty good chemistry. And if they work more matches, who knows? If they were ever a fight, and you put Sonata in the main event picture, and Omega was like IWGP Heavyweight Champ, they could have a five star match. Much as I don't like Omega, I got to give him his props in the ring. So, then the main event, you had Okada defeating Minoru Suzuki. Well, actually, no. Not some Okada, Minoru Suzuki going in a draw. It was a time limit draw. Great match. I thought it was better than their match at New Beginning. At the New Beginning of last year. Because that one, you had, like, insane interference. Yeah, that, the interference got ridiculous. But then uh, you had Chaos there to help Okada out. Where they were brawl with... Uh, they would end up brawling with 
Suzuki Goon. But it was really good back and forth from these guys. And I didn't and I'm surprised that they decided to go with the draw. But I guess they wanted to protect Okada, but they didn't want him to lose, so. Eh, it's fine for what it was. So day 16 was pretty was a really good was a pretty good day of wrestling. So if I were to give it a rating, I'd probably give it like hmm. Probably give it like 7.5, 8 out of 10 for that one. Then you got day 17 where we're going back to the A block. And and we start off with Bad Luck Fale defeating Yuji Nagata. And this was the final match for Yuji Nagata in the tournament. Like he was dead last. He was, he was putting everybody over. But he looked strong doing it. And that's one thing I really like. Nagata... He looked strong, but he made sure the other guy would look good. That's something you need. That's that's what old guys should be doing. Like guys his age, wrestlers his age, he gets it. Unlike clowns like fucking John Cena and all that dumb John Cena, where he's part time, but he wants to fucking bury everybody. <laughs> but it was good to see, good to see this match. Where Nagata was going for the leg early on, but then Fale was able to cover. And he did his usual thing. His splash in the corner looked good. He hit a grenader. I think Nagata kicked out the grenader, and then he hit the bad luck fall. And it was pretty cool after the match how uh, Fale ends up showing Nagata a sign of respect. He just bows, and I really like that. So, uh... Damn, this fucking camera. Okay, that's good. Anyway, so from that, we go to Togi Makabe defeating Yoshihashi. Solid match. <sighs> Guys are going back and forth. Yoshihashi was like trying to sh beat Makabe at his game, trying to hit him straight up instead of like <sighs> using his speed, trying to, trying to go power for power, but... Makabe proved too much, and Makabe, he just hits, he just n nails him with the King Kong knee drop and wins. We had Zack Sabre Jr. defeat Tomohiro Ishii. It was, it was a really good match. Liked Ishii's chops in the corner, chops and forearms in the corner. Sabre, with his usual, Sabre brought his usual technical wrestling skills. Where he tried to hit you with the Put you in a cross arm breaker. Next thing you know, he would just transition from multiple submissions. I think he made. I don't think he made Ishii tap out to the octopus. I think it was a. What was it like a schoolboy roll up or something like that? Where it's no. Saber had that pin where. Uh, he kind of does like a bridge. And he beat Ishii like that. And that was that was a really good match. To see Saber trying to show how tough he is, where he's able to take Ishii's forearms. Trying to show he could take Ishii's forearms. Overall, yeah, Ishii he looks strong. Saber looks strong. He picked up some points. Then you had a Haruki Goto defeat Kota Ibushi. Pretty good match. Where this was a strong style. Never understood the Goto hate. I mean, I mean, Goto, he can seem a little flat at times, but I don't think he's that bad. To me, he's a pretty good worker overall. But, it is, but, then again, the hate's died down. And people kind of like him, so. I remember back in the day, like, people weren't, weren't really fucking with Goto. Thought he was cool, so. But uh, yeah, cool back and forth. I think it, didn't Ibushi do? No, he didn't do a springboard German. He didn't. I think I'm. I'm pretty sure he did a springboard moonsault. Goto had his usual spots, like his kick in the corner. Lunar followed by the Saido suplex. And uh, he ultimately ended up finishing off uh, 
fucking Bushi with a reverse GTR, followed by a second GTR, followed by the regular GTR for the three count. Still wondering, why didn't you, did New Japan, like, what's with Goto not using, like, the Shoten Kai anymore? I'm still wondering that. Can anyone answer that for me? If not, oh well. Then you have, uh, after that match, you have the main event of day 17, which this is the finals match, by the way, to determine who's going to go in the finals of the G1. Tetsuya Naito, Naito defeating Hiroshi Tanahashi, really good match. Yeah, Tanahashi working over Naito's leg throughout in various parts of the match, and he had Naito working over Tanahashi's arm. Really good match. It's not a, it's not on the level of their Wrestle Kingdom 11 match, but it's still a it's still a great match though. Still an awesome match. I think you should check out. And Tanahashi continues to show why he's still the man. Even if he's not in the main event, he's still the man putting younger guys over while looking strong. And people want to fucking call him like the Japanese John Cena, which is straight up bullshit. Anyway, bullshit. Because I really liked uh, Tanahashi's Dragon Screw Leg Whips, his Dragon Screw Neck Breaker. Girl. His high fly flow to the outside. I wish he would have done it the way he did in Wrestle Kingdom 9 against Okada. Where he has Naito in the stands. In the crowd. And uh, Tanahashi kind of puts the rail up close. And uh, goes on top turbo. And he just dives fucking a row or two deep into the crowd. That would be nice if he did that. But uh. Naito, I liked his insecurity, followed by his DD, tornado DDT. Like the glo- I liked Naito's Gloria, which is like a hammerlock cradle slam. The, I liked uh, the Puma Blanca. I enjoyed Naito's Puma Blanca, Koji Clutch in the match. Like the sitting drop kick. He's running drop kick in the corner. And uh end of the match, Naito ends up picking up the win when he hits Tanahashi with the back to back destinos. So day seventeen. I would put I'd say seven point five, maybe eight out of ten. Although I'd say it's better than day 16. Like really good wrestling. Actually, no. Day 16. I'm going to bump it down. It's like 7.5 out of 10. Like 7, 7.5. Or did I bump it? Actually, no. I didn't say 7.5 to 8 out of 10 for day 16. I said 7, 7.5. Maybe so. But either way, better than day 16. Since A Block doesn't have Yano. Because Yano, he's fucking garbage. But, hey, whatever. Then you got day 18 for the main event. You determine who gets the B block. We got uh, Juice Robinson defeating Michael Elgin. Which I figured Elgin would pick up the win, but... He put over Juice, although... It was one of those... Uh, It was a surprise where, like, Juice was able to get, like, a victory roll. He didn't pull the tights or anything. Like, he didn't do no heel shit, but it was, like, a surprise win, so. And Juice was like, holy shit, I won! <laughs> kind of like uh, what he did with Omega. Which, that was pretty fucking funny right there. When he did that shit with uh, Kenny Omega. Because you were expecting... Yeah, that's kind of nice where you get those type of surprises where... You're like, oh, wow, he fucking won. Didn't see that coming. It's good to get those surprises where... Good to get those type of surprises, though. But, uh... Yeah, like, 
Yeah, Juice. He had his jabs, his like right hand. He had like the op like the closed fist. I like the Ogan spinning back fist. Roaring elbows. Buckle bomb. Buckle bomb was good. His suplex was nice. Like Elgin, he does his thing. And Elgin, I'm really, yeah, man. It's good to see Elgin come as far as he has. Because I remember, I remember back in ROH in 2014 when he was all, when they had him as Super Elgin. And the fans were like fucking sick of it. Like, fucking turn heel. Like, it's, he's come a long way from that. And. Yeah, like, nobody fucking liked him. He had, like, that get the fuck off my TV heat. He was also considering, like, pursuing a baseball career. I'm glad that he didn't. I'm glad that he, like, stuck around. I'm glad that he stuck to wrestling and he went to Japan. Because that G1 2015 really revived his career. And it really helped him get back on track. And he's putting guys over clean, so that's... And he's doing some jobs, man. At least he loses, but it, at least it's not on that Super Elgin bullshit, though. That's one thing I like. So, pretty good match. Tonga, Tonga defeats Sonata. This one, he had a little bit of hijinks at the beginning. <sighs> kind of like shaking each other's hands. They tried to do some crazy heel shit. Tried to do some typical heel shit. You know, it's like heel versus heel. Try to get a roll up. Well, the usual type of thing. Then they got to actual wrestling. You know, Tama, he had Tama Tonga with his spots, jumping DDT, big splash in the corner. Corner, his drop kick. Sonata had his double, I liked Sonata's double leap frog drop kick. His TKO. Did he hit the bot? I think he hit like the cross bot. Not, not cross body. Like springboard cross body. His usual thing. His usual thing and stuff. Then you had, and then uh, Tama Tonga, he ended up hitting like uh, the gun stun for the win. So that was a pretty solid match. Toriano defeating Minoru Suzuki. Fuck that match. Worst match in New Japan history. One, at least one of the worst. I think it might have been, I think there might have been a worse, pro, actually no. I think that match against Elgin was probably worse. And I'm sure there might have been a G1 match from last year or the year before. That was probably shittier, but... Can we... Can we make... Can we not have Yano in these fucking G1s for fuck's sake? Because if we could just go without Yano in these G1s, that would be great. But... We gotta fucking deal with him. Whatever. You got Evil defeating Satoshi Kojima. This is a pretty good hard hitting match. I like Kojima's machine gun chops, followed by his uh, running clothesline in the corner, running forearm in the corner. And then he says that, and he has that saying, I'm not sure what it means. I'm not sure what the hell he's saying, whatever that fucking means. Then he, his elbow chop from the top rope is pretty good. Evil's chair spots were good. Evil had his usual good chair spot. Spot. He had his discus clothesline. He had his spot where he grabs it when a dude goes to kick him. But then he, he grabs his foot, grabs the guy's foot, throws it at the referee, and then super kick. And then does a super kick to the mid section. I like that. That I liked his Germans. I liked e Evil's Germans, and then Evil. He ended up. Uh, I liked his Darkness Falls. I liked. Like this is a pretty good match. And Evil ended up picking the win with uh, 
is STO, so with the STO, so that's good. And then their main event, Kenny Omega defeated Okada. Okada came in, and like the back of his neck was injured, so Omega was ended up working over on that. His V triggers were pretty good. Okada's drop kick was not. Okada's drop kicks were good. Like the heavy rain. Red ink. I think it was red ink or deep in depth. Yeah, the red ink was good. Omega's. Omega's Finley roll. Into a moon spot. Into a double leap. Double jump moon salt was pretty good. Where he goes, you can't escape and all that shit. Uh, yeah, pretty good counters, but in the end, Omega hits the one ring angel. And then he ended up cutting the promo. Well, thanking the fans. So, uh, that was good. Thanking the fans. And just talk about how he's going to win the G1. So, uh, day 18 was pretty good. I give day 18. Hmm. That Yano match pissed me off. I'm going to give it like a 6 out of 10. Fuck that Yano match. Without that Yano match, on a, I might, on a good day, I'd say 6.5. But without that Yano match, it would have been a 7. That Yano match was straight trash. So, yeah. Now we're going to go into day 19, the finals. So that one we get. Yeah, we're gonna go over like the tag matches. Suzuki Goon. Let's see. I think it was uh Saber and uh No no Fuck. No 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 no. It was uh yeah, I think it was Saber. Desperado. Damn, I can't remember who all it was in Suzuki Goon. Two, yeah, two teams of Suzuki Goon. It was Zaber, Desperado. Was it Tai Chi? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Tai Chi. Yeah, Tai Chi and um, Taka Mishinoku, I believe. Yeah, I believe it was the guy. They defeated uh, Kushida, Jushin Thunder Liger, Tiger Mask, and Harai, Kawato, Young Ryan. It was a decent match to start the show. Show everybody got their stuff in. I'm going to go, I'm going to breeze through most of this card, so... Yeah, Kirill is a destiny defeating Yuji Nagata and Manabu Nakanishi. She, yeah, it's an okay match. Nakanishi, subpar. Nagata was good as usual. Man, it's been good seeing. He's really had a good run in the G1. Right? Even though he knew he was going to lose, he still went out there and he put on a hell of a performance. So I applaud him for that. Then you have. Yeah, so you had Haruki Goto and Yoshihashi of Chaos defeating Makabe and David Finley. Then you have that was a pretty good match. Finley had his uppercuts. Good drop kick. Makabe did his usual shit. Where you have his clotheslines in the corner. And uh, he did his punches in the corner, Northern Line Suplex, Goto, Saito Suplex, kick in the corner. At that uh <coughs> He had that misdirection clothesline, Yoshihashi with his headhunter Nick Brecker, running chop in the corner. Yeah, good good moves. I think Goto hit the GTR for the win. I believe Goto hit the GTR for the win. Or is it Yoshihashi with Karma? So, either way, they pick up the win. Then you had Juice Robinson, Satoshi Kojima, and Hiroyoshi Tenzon defeat Chase Owens, 
Yujiro Takahashi and Bad Luck Folly of the Bullet Club. Yeah, that match, yeah, it was fine for what it was. Everybody got their shit in. You had uh, Ricochet and Ryusuke Taguchi defeat the Young Bucks for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. And they, I believe they ended up dropping it to Rapungi 3K. Later on, they would end up dropping it to Rapungi 3K, who dropped it to the Young Bucks. I mean, those titles are fucking worthless, dude. Fucking hot potatoes with the titles as usual. Usual. I mean, yeah, good spots. I mean, yeah, Nick and Matt, they spam super kicks. I mean, they, they had a pretty good spot. I like the, the power bomb and Siguri combination they had in the corner. Ricochet's double springboard springboard dropkick on both the Bucks was good. Taguchi was garbage with his bullshit ass, t- ass bumps. Fuck him, so... Bucks hit the Meltzer driver. That's pretty good. Like the Meltzer driver, they had a, I believe they hit the Indy Taker on the floor. That was pretty good. Or was it a Meltzer driver? One of the two. It was good, but anyway, Ricochet and Taguchi, she ended up picking up the win, and they won the tag titles. War Machine defeated Cody Rhodes and Adam Page to retain the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Titles. Titles. And, uh, it was a pretty good match, you know. Cody did his thing. We had that drop down uppercut. You know, that drop down throat thrust that uh, Goldust would do. He was taking a page out of his brother Goldust's book. Adam Page had his good moments. Always love when he does that, uh, when he's on the ropes and he does a front flip and then does a clothesline. Roar Machine had their sh- cool shit. Where, uh, where they have, uh, I think it's Roll, where he does like the backbreaker, then a gut buster, and then a gut rich suplex. Suplex, or was it a powerbomb? No, gut rich powerbomb. I just know suplex. Hanson, I really liked his cartwheel clothesline. Like, War Machine, they're fucking awesome. They carry themselves like badasses, and they're good workers. Gurus. I liked when Raymond Rowe does the Mach 10 and the Superman punch. I mean, that's how you do a fucking Superman punch, right? So, yeah. And then they hit Fallout for the win, so, to retain the titles. Then you had, then you had, uh, Minoru Suzuki. Actually, no, no, no. I don't think Saber was a part of that previous Damn. I know it was Suzuki... Actually, no, after the match, oh, I forgot, after the match, uh, after the match, the heavyweight tag match, you had, uh, what's this to be? Wait, you had Gorillas of Destiny come out and challenge for the tag titles, and War Machine's like, okay, we accept, and then the next thing you know, Killer Elite Squad, they, they run in and beat the shit out of everyone, so saying okay we want the tag titles we're coming for them them so yeah that's gonna be I'm gonna watch yeah so that's gonna be good that's cool feud I mean it helps liven up the tag division but I don't know if uh, Killer Elite Squad if they're still in New Japan now or if they went back to Noah so don't know what what's with them as of now since I haven't quite been keeping up with New Japan as much as I should but I'll be watching Wrestle Kingdom hope maybe next week I could fucking give a review read it but whatever so is Suzuki Minoru Suzuki let's see oh, let's see Minoru Suzuki, there's Azuka. I think no, I think Zack Saber Jr. was in that match. Was 
Damn, I can't remember who exactly was in it, but they defeated uh, Rushi Tanahashi, Kota Ibushi, and Michael Elgin. After that, they beat the fuck out of each other. And uh, this set up a... And this was to foreshadow a feud between Tanahashi and uh, Suzuki, so... So, that's going to be pretty good. So, yeah, so then we get the co-main event, which is uh, Sonata, Evil, Bushi, and Hiromu Takahashi of Los Ingobernables de Japón. They defeated, it's the co-main event, they defeated Okada, Ishii, Gato, and Toriano. And the match was solid. Everybody got their usual shit in. But they ended up getting the win, and I guess, uh, I believe Evil, didn't Evil hit the fucking STO on Okada? I can't remember, but, and they ended up picking up the win, so, then we get to the main event, Tetsuya Naito and Kenny Omega, the G1 Finals, this was a great match, <laughs> Naito being his cool self, and Ni Omega d bringing his A game. They did a pretty good job. And, uh... This is a great match. I had to give this one a five star. The guys warming up. I mean, you had Omega... Do his usual shit. How he has, like, V-Trigger family roll into the... Moonsault, although he misses the Moonsault a lot of times. His Dragon Suplex was great. Really liked his, uh, liked his German. V triggers as good as usual. Usual, Naito. He had, uh, his spots were good. Like when he did, like, a, I think he did, like, yeah, he did a reverse Frankensteiner. Pretty sure he did a reverse Frankensteiner off the top rope with Omega. They were both on the top rope, and he did a reverse. Frankensteiner. He needed another Hurricane Rana. Then a regular Frankensteiner. But one of the biggest spots was when uh oh Naruto was also working over Omega's neck. In very in most in various parts of the match as well. And this was when uh Naito he, he kinda he was going for a power driver to put Omega through the table. Although Naito fucking botches, although that was a botch. And he misses the table, and it really, it really looked bad for like it looked real bad, man. Like Omega, Omega might have gotten, like he might have gotten concussed. But uh, 